the most significant development on research in fertility is the finding that uh, high, at high levels of development, the relationship between development and fertility is reversing, i.e. the idea that uh, fertility doesn't follow a linear trend uh, declining forever, but at certain points of development it might start to go up. And this is both a significant and a surprising finding because uh, not many scholars uh, predicted that uh, and it's a very recent finding and this has triggered a, a whole set of research issues on why uh, the US now has higher fertility than Brazil, why Australia has higher fertility than Thailand, why Sweden has higher fertility than Iran. So. Now, in the most developed countries, fertility is surprisingly higher than the countries that are just below their development levels. Specific policies will not have a big impact. Uh, we know from research that uh, uh, if you make a special policy like you gave you give a bonus for a birth mm -hmm. this is unlikely to have a major impact first of all because the child is there forever so you you just don't get uh, too much if you focus on the first uh, year or so the second issue is that parents need to have a stable perspective uh, so policies that work are uh, policies in which the Welfare, welfare state is stable for a number of years, I would say decades as well, or there is a taxation that is family friendly, maybe being low or maybe being uh, catered especially to families. Uh, for what concerns the relationship with uh, development, the lessons to be learned are maybe we should be a bit more worried about the crisis because it may have a spillover effect on, on demographic developments like declining uh, uh, fertility. Uh, on the other hand, uh, economic development is per se a good thing for what concerns fertility. The societal setting is not independent of the prevailing culture in a society. So the fact that in some societies we have a given set of policies or a certain setting of the welfare state depends on the culture in that society. On the other hand, individuals and couples may differ in their values, their, uh, the norms they uh, abide to. And this is also something that has been shown to be shaping individual decisions. The key issue here is to have a compatibility between uh, individual values and uh, social policies. It's been a contradiction for a while in the literature. There are two explanations. One is that uh, especially this uh, emphasis on, uh, on families has prevented the development of a meaningful welfare support uh, for children and working mothers, uh, especially. And the, the other issue is that these are societies where the centrality of the family uh, is uh, somehow counterweighted by a lower level of generalized trust. So trust in institutions and trust in people who are others than the families is lower than other societies. And in some recent research with my colleagues uh, uh, at Bocconi, we, we are showing that trust is an important uh, precondition to develop a society where uh, working mothers are well accepted and supported. Basically because we need to trust others if we uh, have to rely on them taking care of our kids. Mm -hmm. Migration has an important role in replacing uh, fertility. This is the idea. After fertility has gone down, 
there is a lag of 25, 30 years, and after this lag, migration is likely to go up. So we, we have a statistical relationship in which we show that uh, uh, migration reacts to fertility decline uh, 25 or 30 years before. People go through countries where fertility has been low, and this has happened also in the past. In the past, the big out-migration from Europe to America, for instance, was uh, uh, dependent on the fact that there were big cohorts. So out-migration was related to high fertility. In the same sense, in-migration is related to low fertility.